Before we get started today, I'm gonna quickly run through some shout outs. Richard Litter from Quebec, Canada. I got your letter, thank you very much. You're my first bus nut fan mail. Second, guys, check out one of my viewers' channel called Heavy Metal Mechanics. He bought a Romadian bus and had it shipped to the US where he's slowly restoring it. Heavy Metal Mechanic recently made a video dedicated to me. Dude, I am so honored, thank you. Anyways, link up here and down in the description box below to this guy's channel. Go check out some of Heavy Metal Mechanics content. Finally, Sam I Am left me a comment asking, could you do an episode talking more about the tag axle and how it functions differently on different coach types? Well, Sam I Am, today we're gonna to talk about why most motor coaches in the US have that third set of wheels in the back. But first, let's row that intro. What is going on all of you bus nuts, geeks, and enthusiasts out there? Welcome to another episode of Motor Coach World. My name is James. Most personal family vehicles on the road have four wheels and two axles. Some have more and some less. I guess depending on where you live and what you need your personal vehicle to do, if handy enough, one can modify their cars to look like and do just about anything. Oh my fat baby loves to eat. Loves to eat. At the age of five, I stepped off a Boeing 747-400 aircraft and onto US soil for the first time with my parents. I started to notice things that my five-year-old brain had never comprehended before, like not all people in the world have black hair. In fact, I quickly realized that there were all kinds of hair colors here in the US. Blonde, red, brunette, even electric blue. But being obsessed with buses at that age, one other thing really caught my eye. It was the first time I had seen a motor coach in my life. Keep in mind, this was 1990 and there was no internet or YouTube at the time, so it wasn't like I could just look one up. The sight of a coach bus quickly broke many preconceived rules and orders of things that I had already set in my mind throughout my five years of existence. For one, it was the first bus I had ever seen with a third set of wheels in the rear. On top of that, they were Audis and not innies. Now, I had seen many trucks and buses in my life by then. The general rule of thumb I had set for myself in my head based on my five years of observation was that on buses and trucks, front wheels are always single wheels with Audis, meaning that the wheel hub went outwards and rear wheels were always dual tires and innies, meaning that the wheel hub went inwards. Well, as a jet lagged five year old on that warm summer day back in 1990, already in shock by the different hair colors of people, Seeing this coach bus completely shattered everything I had believed in as far as wheel etiquette on trucks and buses goes. Not only did this bus have a third set of wheels in the rear, but they were single tires and not dualies. And the one thing I really couldn't wrap my five-year-old brain around was the fact that they were Audis. Unknowing of the actual term at that age, I had discovered the tag axle. A conventional bus has two axles, one in the front with two single wheels that steer, also called the steer axle, and the rear axle, which typically has a set of dual wheels attached to it for weight distribution. If the bus is rear wheel drive, which most buses tend to be here in the US, the rear axle is also called the drive axle, since that is the axle that gets the power to drive the vehicle. But buses with two axles in the rear of the vehicle are called tri-axle buses, and more rarely, four-axle buses are known as quad axle buses. These extra axles are usually added for better weight distribution depending on the design of the vehicle, as well as for legal reasons based on the restrictions set on the bus manufacturer by the country they're built in. Basically, if a bus is built too long or too heavy, an extra axle and set of wheels will make it safer and more stable on the road. Motor coaches in the US are usually either 40 feet long or 45 feet long, and most of them have three axles. The steer axle in front, the drive axle in the middle rear, and behind the drive axle is the tag axle. On most motor coach designs used in the US, a tag axle is usually unpowered and placed behind the drive axle with a single set of wheels instead of dual wheels. With that said, during the 70s, a popular make and model of coaches that were manufactured at the time called Eagle, specifically the Model 5s and Model 7s, were designed with a tag axle in front of the drive axle, which made them very interesting to drive. The front suspension of the Eagles were very soft, 
with a lot of travel. Now remember, the tag axle doesn't provide any actual power to the vehicle. It's simply there tagging along. On this unusual coach design with the tag axle in the middle of the coach being pushed by the drive wheels behind, operators of the Eagle Model 5 and Model 7 coaches reported that it was like being on the edge of a diving board when the coach was on certain road surfaces. The front end of the coach went up and down at every road joint, forcing the drivers to grip the steering wheel firmly to avoid being thrown out of their seats. Again, a very unconventional design by Eagle. Today, the 40 and 45 foot long motor coaches being used in the US are all designed with tag axles in the rear, positioned behind the drive axles. If anyone knows of a motor coach still being designed today with the tag axle in the middle, please comment down below in the comment box. I would love to know about it. In the US, motor coaches that are 40 or 45 feet long, as well as some double-decker city transit buses are all designed with tag axles. Shorter motor coach variants such as the 35-foot Temsa TS35 and the Van Hool CX35s and the MCI's new J3500 or more popularly called the Baby J all have single axles in the rear with no tag axles. Primarily, tag axles are added to a vehicle design to increase the overall capacity of the chassis. Usually, different authorities from different countries will have specifications on legal limits as far as the amount of weight that can be put on each axle of a vehicle. In the United Kingdom, a recent extension to the legal limit on how long a rigid bus and motor coach can be designed has led to the increased use of three axle chassis to accommodate the additional weight of the vehicle as well as passenger load. As of March 23rd, 2020, US federal law states that single axles are limited to 20,000 pounds. Any vehicles with two axles in the rear spaced between 40 and 96 inches apart are limited to additional 34,000 pounds. Now, there's actually some pretty complex specifications here when it comes down to how much your vehicle can weigh based on how many axles you have and how far apart they are. In fact, there's an entire website with a bunch of charts and formulas that describe the weight to axle ratio for a truck or bus. And as Chinese as I am, I really don't want to turn the rest of this video into a math lesson. But if you're nerdy enough and want to check it out, I will definitely post a link to this site down in the description box below. On top of increasing the capacity limit for a vehicle, another function of the tag axle is for a smoother ride. Combined with the air ride suspension system equipped on most motor coaches in the US, the second set of wheels behind the drive axle will make the ride experience more pleasant for those on board. Tag axles also create more vehicle stability, especially when driving in poor road or weather conditions. More wheels means more of your vehicle touching the road, which means more traction. Because motor coaches are usually traveling at higher speeds on the interstate and are heavier than that of the conventional single-decker city transit buses or school buses, tag axles also serve as an additional set of brakes for the motor coach. Now, I could keep going on all the benefits a tag axle brings to a coach bus, but with the positives, there are also some negatives. Another axle means more tires, and more tires means more money. At around $1,000 a tire for a motor coach, that's two more tires and $2,000 more that will be wearing out and requiring replacement, along with other components of the tag axle and wheel itself. Also, adding the extra weight of another axle to the vehicle, as well as the additional drag of two wheels on the road, a tag axle is going to increase any vehicle's fuel consumption as well as reduce the miles per gallon. As mentioned earlier, tag axles are just that, they tag along for the ride. Also known as a dead axle or lazy axle, aside from weight distribution and making the bus more stable and safe, some would say that they really don't do much on their own. That's not true. No. No. Van Hool's TDX925 double-decker coach, as well as MCI's DL3, D4505, as well as the EL3 and on later models of the J4500, tag axle steering was a feature on these coaches. The rear tag wheel could turn the opposite direction of the front wheels when the driver steered the coach during slow maneuvers. This gave the coach bus a shorter turning radius, as well as more maneuverability at low speeds. Once the coach went over 20 miles an hour, the tag wheels would automatically lock in a straight position to create vehicle stability. The driver also had the option to manually lock the tag wheel to prevent it from turning regardless of the speed. Now, many DL3 models suffered from tag steering malfunctions, causing a lot of wear on the tag tires. This resulted in bus owners manually locking the tag wheels from turning, 
basically disabling this feature as it was really costly to repair. Now, when it came to the tag axle, Prevo went a completely different direction. <laughs> you see what I did there? Different direction, because we're talking about steering. Maybe you haven't noticed, but no one's laughing. Instead of tag steering, Prevo offered a tag lift feature. This gave the driver the ability to flip a switch, causing the entire tag axle to lift upwards so that the rear tag tire did not touch the ground. The purpose of this feature was to allow the coach to make tight turns during slow speeds and parking lots, as well as reduce drag and wear on the tag tires during tight turns. Also, if a Prevo ever got stuck in the mud or snow, lifting the tag tire also gave the coach a chance to break free as it would increase the amount of load weight on the drive wheels. On top of this, all of the above mentioned coach models offered tag unloading, where the operator could dump the air from the bellows that were holding the tag wheels to the ground. Although the tag wheels would still be touching the ground, the entire weight of the coach would actually be resting on the drive wheels instead of the tag wheels. And thus, the tag tires at this point would only be lightly skidding on the pavement during tight turns, reducing wear and tear on the tag tires. Not as effective as the tag axle lift feature and steerable tag feature, but still useful when you have no other options. Now, unless you're a gearhead or a truck and bus nut, the average person doesn't even notice that on trucks and buses, the front wheels are usually what I like to call outies, which means they stick out and the rear wheels are usually innies, which means they go inward. Well, it wasn't until I was around 10 years old when I realized that the back wheels, which are the innies, were just the front ones, which are the outies, flipped around. Now, real quick, I'm gonna let the experienced diesel techs at Peoria Charter explain why the front wheels are outies and the rear wheels tend to be innies. You got your outside of your rim and your inside of your rim. Your axle is actually going in and mounting to this portion for the steer tire, which makes it look like that on the outside. Whereas a dual tire, you have two separate tires. Well, you can't mount them like that. I mean, you probably could, but I don't know how. So what you do is you turn the front and the front, you stick them together and mount them together for your dual tire purposes. So inside, going to the inside of the bus, the outside of the tire, and then your outside of the tire mating together, and then your out are inside going to the outside of the bus. That's why it looks like it's a any. When you mate two wheels together for the length of the studs to attach them to the hub. Why are tag wheels single? Wait, also there allows them to be steerable. Steerable wheels are always mostly Audis. Yes, to cut the angle in toward the bus. Makes it easier to turn, better Stability. steering, okay. Okay, I know, I know folks, this was another very tech heavy episode. I hope you guys watching were able to at least tag along. But if you guys enjoyed this episode, please remember to hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already. And don't forget to check out my Patreon page, patreon.com slash motorcoach. You could become someone who I consider awesome by becoming a patron by pledging as low as a dollar a month. That's $12 a year for you to be on my badass awesome person list. It takes just two minutes to do on Patreon and your proceeds would go towards me replacing my camera and sound gear when they break. And yes, they do break. And as always, thank you all for watching folks. And remember, if you're watching this, you are part of the motor coach world.